All right, everyone, it's seven o'clock. Um, this is Catherine Kramer here in the development office at Town Hall. I will start with roll. Barbara Brenneman. Present. Patrick Carrier. He's, I believe, absent. Uh, Michael Gorbulis. Present. Great. Um, Matt Pogson is, I believe, absent. Um, Inez St. James, absent. Marcy Schwartz. Present. Great. Uh, Scott Halstead. Present. Uh, John Vibbert. Here. And Keith Vibbert. Here. Great. And since we have um, three of our active members um, absent this evening, we'll be appointing all three alternates um, to the voting matters this evening. So that's John Vibbert, Keith Vibbert, and Scott Halstead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barbara Brenneman, Chair of the Farmington Town Plan and Zoning Commission. And I welcome you to our Monday, June 7th, 2021 Zoning Commission meeting uh, being held here in Town Hall. According to the agenda, we will begin with call to order. Catherine's going to read it this evening. Uh, town of Farmington Town Plan and Zoning Commission notice is hereby given that the Town Plan and Zoning Commission will be held online public hearing Monday, June 7th, 2021 at 7 p.m. on the following applications. Farmington West Estates application for six lot resubdivision of Whitetail Run off Snowberry Lane AH zone. Thomas Krzyzewski and Agata Trojanowski application two lot resubdivision of 344 Meadow Road uh, R40 zone. Vitek Bach application for a special permit to construct accessory structure in excess of 30% of primary structure at 1815 New Britain Avenue, R20 zone. Town Plan and Zoning Commission application for amendment to the special, excuse me, to the Zoning Regulations Special Innovation Floating Zone, Article 2, Section 31, G4F. Interested parties are encouraged, encouraged to participate in the online hearing. The link to the meeting may be found at the Town of Farmington's website, www.farmington-ct.org, about us calendar meetings. A copy of this proposal is online at www.farmington-ct.org, government, town planning and zoning commission, public hearing documents, or by calling the planning department at Farmington Town Hall, 860-675-2325, dated at Farmington, Connecticut, this 20th day of May, 2021, Town Planning Zoning Commission, Barbara Brenneman Chair. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on according to the agenda and do new business. Martha Stewart, we accept an application for home business behavioral health services at 115 Bird's Eye Road in an R20 zone and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of July 12th 2021. I need a motion and a second, please. This is Marcy Schwartz. I make a motion to accept the application and call Martha Stewart. Keith Hibbert, I second. Thank you. Does everyone know what we're voting on? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried. Brook Farm LLC accept an application for special special permit for office use, showroom for banquet setting, laundry for banquet linens, and storage of vehicles and equipment to support the Farmington Club Polo Grounds businesses, CR Zone, and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of July 12th, 2021. May I have a motion and a second, please? So this is Marcy Schwartz and I make a motion to accept the application from Brick Farm LLC. Thank you, may I have a second? Keith Ever, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
abstention. Motion carries. Town Planning and Zoning Commission accept an application for the affordable housing plan and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of July 12, 2021. May I have a, sec a motion and a second, please. This is Marcy Schwartz and I uh, make a motion to accept the Town Planning and Zoning Commission application for the affordable housing plan with a um, recommended date of July 12th. All in favor? Bigger? Oh, there is a second, Keith. That's me, yep. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to public hearings. The first public hearing is Farmington West Estates, an application with six lot resubdivision of Whitetail Run off Snowberry Lane in an AH zone. Uh, Madam Planner, as uh, I am recusing myself from this matter, I will not participate. Okay. Um, I have the application on the screen for the applicant to present. May, uh, James, why don't you unmute yourself? Muted. Can you hear me? Yet? Can you hear now me? We can hear you. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Uh, Attorney James Iogas, 104 Bellevue Avenue for the applicant Farmington West Estates Limited Partnership. Uh, the applicant is proposing a resubdivision uh, of six lots for property located at the corner of Snowberry Lane uh, and Plainville Avenue. Uh, this application is phase five from the originally approved Snowberry Master Plan known as Farmington West Estates. Uh, the application is consistent with the master plan and the previous phases that have come before this commission. The site is serviced by public water and sewer and uh, is located in the AH zone. All the utilities for this subdivision are being installed underground. The addition of the proposed lots 153 through 158 will increase the total number of declared units in this development to 101, and that will leave 82 units undeclared at this time. Uh, only one third, uh, in, in terms of wetlands, we had one third of lot number 155, which is in the upper left-hand corner, uh, was, a, uh, was subject to uh, uplands review uh, by the Wetlands Commission. The commission did approve our application uh, with the following conditions. Number one was that we install conservation easement medallions along the open space boundary. And secondly, we install perimeter erosion control measures that will include uh, straw wattles in the uh, upland review area. The stormwater from this site uh, flows in a northwesterly direction towards houses located in phase four, which was previously approved by this commission uh, back in March of 2019. Uh, to protect against drainage infiltration uh, into that phase, we have proposed a one foot of hot, high vegetated berm along the westerly boundary of this phase, uh, again, to prevent stormwater runoff uh, from uh, getting onto site, uh, the phase four site. That drainage is directed by uh, proposed piping into the storm drainage located in the proposed whitetail run, uh, which is the, the new street that will be built. And then it flows into the, to the existing storm water system, which is located in Snowberry Lane. Uh, this same approach uh, is implied regarding the easterly boundary of the property. Another one foot high berm will be uh, built to direct the storm water towards Whitetail Run uh, and into the storm water system in Snowberry Lane. Runoff from the open space, which exists to the north and the east, will then be directed by sheet flow uh, into the brook located. Uh, near Plainville Avenue. All the runoff from the developed portion of this phase will be directed uh, to our stormwater system and then flow into the existing stormwater management system, which is located uh, in Farmington West Estates. The, uh, the homes to be built will be similar to the homes previously built in the most recent phase uh, four. They will be approximately 2,000 square feet. Uh, we are in receipt of the site plan comments issued by the town on June 3rd. Uh, and we did not take any issue with those comments. And uh, we certainly agree to those being incorporated 
as conditions of approval. Uh, no blasting was required in Coyote Court, and the test holes that we've done on Whitetail indicate that that will not be the case here either. Any uh, ledge in the area that needs to be cleared can be done by machine. Uh, it's been determined that the rock in this area is, is fairly soft. All, all the homes being built will be installed with curtain foundation drains uh, so that the base, basements of these homes will remain dry. That's basically what we have uh, as a um, proposal for this six lot subdivision. We'd be happy to answer any questions that the commission has. Any questions? Commissioners, questions? Mike, yeah. I guess Mike. Mike. Um, just to clarify, this was part of the um, the uh, the approval way back, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, the last time we uh, we approved the last street is it the is Coyote Court the one to the uh, west on the map there? That's yes. correct. Okay. Um, we had gotten a lot of uh, of public comment in that regarding uh, some basement water issues and foundation cracking. Have, have there been any um, anything further on that since that time? No, no not, not that we're aware of. Uh, there is um, a resolution being proposed for some of the, uh, some of the issues uh, with respect to the subdivision that are being done uh, with the association. Uh, but uh, as far as water and basements and things of that nature, uh, the foundation drains that we propose uh, in these buildings uh, should be keeping these buildings nice and dry. Okay, great. Thank you. Nothing further. Marcy? So I, I'm just curious how, f is this half? I see that there is some future development around apartments and things like that. And what percentage are we at? Well, in this, in this subdivision, uh, this is this will get us up to 101 units, uh, and we'll have another 82 still to be built. So it's that's that's the that's the math on it. So okay, and then I'm I'm looking at like slide 20, 21, and it's I'm seeing future apartment area and phase one area for apartments. I'm just curious, are, are those done? Marcy, just to clarify, this was in the original approval for the subdivision. So these uh, 20, 21, and 22 were the original um, application. Oh, so this, this is not relevant. This just shows you what the, the, the complete master plan is and what master plan parts were approved. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't have a recollection, so maybe it was actually before my time. I'm not sure. But no, otherwise, I, the... Looks fine. Interesting. Curious to go drive through there. Yeah, I'm Scott? good. Yeah, I don't have any questions at this time. Keith? I have no questions at this time. Thank you. John? Well, none of these units are affordable housing. Is that correct? Not in this section, no. Uh, are you intending to do more affordable housing? I think that section, that, that part of the development's already been built. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, this is a public hearing. So I welcome anyone who is online taking part in this process this evening to speak up either in favor or in opposition to this application. If you're online, you raise your hand and we'll allow, we will allow you to speak. So again, if you raise your hand in the Zoom function, we'll allow you to speak. I see one hand raised at this point in time. Les, L-E-S, I'm going to allow you to talk if you want to unmute yourself. Hello? Hi, we can hear you. Hi, I just address wondered- the commission and let us, uh, with your name and address. Leslie Kuhn, 609 Plainville Avenue. And there's a tunnel that goes under the road onto my property. And I'm just wondering how much more water I'm going to have to take on. 
And, uh, you know, quite frankly, I don't have my engineer online with me today. He was out of town. Uh, it's a question that I cannot answer, uh, honestly. Uh, and uh, you're certainly entitled to an answer. And uh, I would like to provide that to you. Um, it may have to wait until next meeting if, 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 if the commission feels that, that that's uh, a necessity. I just, is there any way I can get that tunnel closed off? Again, uh, I can't answer that question for you. I, I don't know the answer. When you say tunnel, do you mean it's a pipe or a tunnel? It's a pipe they put in the year after my father died. When it was just my mother living here. And they put it under the road. And I was a young kid at the time and I went down to see what they were doing and they told me that I could never close that hole up. Okay, yeah, and I, I just, you know, I, I can give you some assumptions, but again, the engineer would probably be the best person to answer that question. The, the water in this subdivision does not run for the most part in that direction, although there is a brook on Plainville Avenue. The, the, the water from the roads that we're building all ends up in the stormwater detention basin, uh, which is in the uh, south, what's that, southeast corner, uh, southwest corner of the property. Uh, the only water that gets shed towards Plainville Avenue uh, is some water from the open space, but that's the a sheet. Lands. Yeah, that's a sheet flow. Um, and uh, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised that it, it passes underneath the road because it's probably a, a, a water course. Uh, but again, I, it wasn't a water course before 1982 when my father died. Yeah. <laughs> again, I don't know the answer. Uh, I can, I can get you the answer, but I just, I can't get it for you tonight. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Um, if there are other individuals looking for public comment, uh, you may raise your hand in the Zoom function. Um, seeing no other hands raised. Commissioners, do you have any other questions you'd like to ask? Then, Madam Chair, uh, Mike Willis. Um, if, I, if I'm correct, if I remember the last time, our, our hands are uh, tied, but we have very little um, that we're able to do with this because this was settled in, in court. Am I correct in that? You're, Commissioner, you are absolutely correct in that. Uh, and okay. this plan is consistent with that settlement. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, I, you know, if the developer can work with the, the neighbor across the street, but I, I don't. I personally don't see a need to keep this open if uh, it really, you really can't do much with it. Other than that, that's all I have, Madam Chair. Anyone else? Does the applicant uh, wish? This is John Vibbert. John? Uh, I have concerns that the uh, question from the neighbor is not being answered uh, in any form or fashion, other than to say they could bring the engineer in. Um, so I, I'm not sure why uh, th this sh we should be moving on this until the questions are answered. We can leave the matter open, open until next meeting. Try to get some resolution. That's it. The commissioners have to agree. Needs to be a consensus. Yep. Just so get, do it, get a motion to continue. If the commission is of that ilk that we need a motion to continue to the next meeting, please. June twenty first. June twenty first. I feel like this should be an answer. For this person. Marcy, motion? you're you're stating you wish to make a motion to continue or yes. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. Can I have a second, please? 
Second. Scott Halstead, I second. Oh, Lord John. There's a motion and a second to continue. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. We'll provide something in writing to the commission before the next meeting. Thank you. We'll move on to the next public hearing, please. Thomas Krasuski and Agatha Trojanowski, application for two lot resubdivision of 344 Meadow Road in an R40 zone. I have the application on the screen. Phil, you're welcome to present. Thank you, Catherine. Um, the, um, this is Philip Doyle, land planner from LADA in Simsbury. Um, we have worked uh, to put this application to, together. Um, Catherine, I don't know if any questions are going to uh, come up in terms of engineering, but you, um, I had emailed you yesterday and our uh, civil engineer, Mike Sherman, um, might be um, on the phone. So uh, you might have to find him if, um, if, if questions come up. The, uh, this application uh, is a resubdivision lot uh, uh, 16 and 16A it exist on, uh, on uh, uh, Meadow Road and it's a 5.72 acre parcel. It's on the cover sheet there that Catherine just took, uh, uh, showed. It's the um, uh, yellow outlined um, uh, piece uh, right there. The, um, I included the parcel or the map just to the right of that exactly. This, this parcel uh, resulted uh, from the phase two of uh, Summers B uh, that was made in um, uh, 1999, the end of 1999. Uh, Summers B phase two uh, took a, the 10.5 acre parcel that was owned by uh, Roscoe and Alice Strong, and it broke out the lots uh, to the, um, uh, in that, if you see that black box, the, the four lot right there, the, the four lots that are associated with the uh, Clearbrook um, uh, cul-de-sac. Uh, Roscoe and, and Alice then retained a, um, uh, an L-shaped parcel, that's 5.72 acres, that's the parcel that Catherine is outlining now, and it has an existing house on it. And the interesting thing was that right to the right of where the uh, Catherine had the cursor. Lot 16A was defined, uh, and it was um, indicated on the, on the plans that it was not to be considered a building lot at that time. It was a future lot to be retained by uh, Roscoe and uh, Alice Strong. And we believe that was was done at the time. This is the final the file plat that was that was filed on the land records, but. Uh, uh, I think they were not looking to pay uh, property taxes on it uh, at that point in time. So as time has gone on, they've sold the, the, the land and it's now owned by Tom uh, and his wife. And uh, what we are looking to do at this point is to establish lot 16A as a, um, a formal building lot. And uh, uh, the zoning today, R40, is the same as the zoning when uh, Summersby was originally uh, approved. Uh, the lot that uh, we are pro uh, proposing matches the dimensions of that uh, uh, lot that was shown on the Summersby Phase 2. This is the, the development plan. The house on, on lot 16 would remain un unchanged. Um, we, we've shown how a, prop, a house could be developed on the lot with driveway, water, sewer connections, stormwater connections. Um, so we believe it meets all the bulk standards. It is not within 150 feet of the um, of the nearby wetlands. There's no disturbance uh, uh, in, in any of the upland review area. 
uh, when Summers B was approved, uh, there was about 26% uh, open space that uh, went with that uh, subdivision. And uh, that was a good portion of that was the uh, wetlands and the conservation easements that were established actually on, on the lot that um, the, the uh, Roscoe and Alice retained. And uh, in meeting with the town staff, the town staff has asked us if we could include in that just immediately right there, right where Catherine has the cursor. There's two older ponds in, in that area and the town staff has asked us if we could extend the conservation easement to include those, those ponds and we agreed we didn't see any issue with that. Uh, so the, if you look back and then say, okay, what would be the total then open space that would be associated with, with the, the original application and now be about 27%. Uh, so we more than meet those, those requirements. So it's a relatively straightforward uh, application. We've uh, uh, sent out the notices. When I sent out the notices, I put a map in the notice so that the, the neighbors could see what we were proposing. Um, the, um, we provided drainage calculations. Uh, we've received the comment letter from uh, the end of last week from the town engineer we have, or the town uh, staff, uh, we have no questions uh, or, com or problems with any of the comments. And uh, that's really the sum and substance of, of the application. It's uh, relatively straightforward. Commissioners, do you have questions? Mike? I have no questions, thank you. Marcy? No, no questions. Scott? No questions. Keith? No questions, thank you. John? Uh, so I have a question, uh, not uh, with lot 16A, uh, but the upper portion of lot 16 seems to be connected with a right of way that would allow them to put a driveway and another house in. So, am I reading that correctly? No, as far as I know, there's no other rights of way. There's, that's a driveway that exists that Catherine is pointing out that goes into the existing house. So uh, the existing house will remain, but there's, as far as we know, there's no other rights of way. So I, I'm talking about the upper part of that property. Upper part. Uh, there, Catherine, there's, there's, that part. That's an no, conservation There's a conservation easement in there that, that is on the adjoining lot for uh, Summersby. And right there, the, maybe Catherine could go back and this, this dog leg, this L shape that goes up to the north, uh, that's all part of the conservation easement on, on this property. And that actually abuts the uh, town park. I can't remember the name of the town park uh, that's immediately on the north border there. So there's no other development potential that's associated with this. Uh, thank you. That answered my question. I didn't realize that was part of the conservation easement. Yep. That's all conservation, never to be developed. Thank you. Thank you, John. Again, this is a public hearing, which leads us to allowing the public to speak either in favor or in opposition to this application. You may take part by on the Zoom system, raising your hand, and we will acknowledge you and welcome your opinions. So if you would like to speak in favor or in opposition, please raise your hand. Again, raise your hand in the Zoom function if you're looking to make a public comment. I see no hands raised at this point in time. Are there any other questions from the commissioners? Would the applicant like to make a closing statement? Um, I'd just like to say thank you very much for giving us this opportunity and um, we hope you vote in favor. Thank you. With that, I thank will close. You. Is that somebody speaking? Applicant. This is Tom. Thank you. Who's that? 
property. You're welcome. Uh, I, I thought I was missing someone. Um, sorry, I didn't say thank you, Mina. You're quite welcome. And with that, I'll close this public hearing. So commissioners, we have a position of having to vote on this application. I need a motion and a second, please. So this is Marcy Schwartz and I make a motion to approve the application for a two lot subdivision at 344 Meadow Road and R40 zone. May I have a second, please? Keith River, I second. Thank you, Keith. In, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Good night. Good night. Good night. Moving on to Vitek Bach application for special permit to construct an accessory structure in excess of 30% of the primary structure at 1815 New Britain Avenue in an R20 zone. Uh, Vitek, I have your application on the screen if you would like to present. Uh, make sure you unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Uh, basically, I want to build a detached garage on my property. Yes, to identify yourself. Um, please identify yourself and just state your address. Uh, it's Vitek Bag, uh, 1850 New Britain Avenue. Thank you. So we're seeing that on the screen now. Yeah, so it's this lot right here and the garage is right back. Oh, sorry, our mouse is a little jumpy in the conference room, so I apologize if I keep zipping back and forth. Vitek, do you have anything else to present? Um, no, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Commissioners, questions? Mike? Yes. What's the building material? I'll be uh, on the slab and it will be uh, wood. Okay, so the pictures that are, the pictures that we're looking at right now, is that the color and everything? Yes. Vinyl siding? Yes. Okay. Marcy, uh, Mike, do you have additional? No, I was just going to let you know that was it. Thank you. Marcy? Yeah, um, I. it looks like from the summary, the garage is going to be within the guidelines. Um, so I have no additional questions, no. Scott? Uh, no questions. Keith? I have no questions, thank you. John? Uh, no questions. Thank you, I have no questions. Um, does the applicant wish to add anything to his presentation? Um, no, not at the moment. Thank you. Then I will move to close this public hearing. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I've done it again. <laughs> this is a public hearing. Um, if we have anyone in the Zoom audience that would like to participate either in favor or in opposition to this application, Please do so by raising your hand and we'll acknowledge you. I am seeing no hands raised in the Zoom function. Last call if you are looking to make a public comment. No hands raised. Anything more, commissioners? No. Hearing none, I'll close this public hearing. And I'll look for a motion and a second on VTEC back. So this is Marcy Schwartz, and I propose that we accept the application um, for a special permit to construct an accessory garage in excess of 30% of the primary structure at 1815 New Britain Avenue in an R20 zone. This is Keith Hibbert, and I second. Thank you. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstention? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Public hearing number four, Town Plan and Zoning Commission, application for amendment to the zoning regulation, special innovation floating zone, article two, section 31G4F. Good evening, everyone. This is Catherine Kramer, Town Planner. Um, I'll be presenting uh, the text amendment application. Um, as uh, Madam Chair stated, it's to Article 2, Section 31G, 4F. Uh, it's the addition of this clause, which I will read to you. You can zoom in. Um, for an, uh, for an application that involves the reuse, redevelopment, or repurposing of an existing building or structure, which meets the current dimensional and yard requirements for the front yard, side yard, rear yard, and parking and building setback of the existing zone, the dimensional and yard requirements of the existing zone, or the dimensional and yard requirements outlined in this section, G4, shall apply provided the application does not seek to reduce any dimensional and yard requirements beyond the existing condition of the site, building, or structure. Um, I am making this text amendment proposal of, to be effective June 14th, 2021. Um, our current special innovation floating zone regulations do not provide any flexibility for the reuse or repurposing of existing buildings. Um, I believe that the town and the commission should be in favor of reusing buildings um, as an environmentally sensitive way to redevelop existing sites. It's also economically sustainable to provide opportunities for um, building owners to um, redevelop sites without um, large scale demolition and rebuilding. Um, our current regulations um, are limited and um, this limitation was brought to the town's attention with the application of, uh, for 15 Farm Spring um, and for example, at this site, the existing compliant building is PR, um, and it would not be compliant under the special innovation um, building setback. Um, so the PR zone is, um, has a building setback for 30 um, versus the special innovation floating zone having it at 40. So for the structure at 15 Farm Spring at 37 and a half feet setback from the rear lot, um, it would not fit into the special innovation floating zone by two and a half feet. Um, so that is one example of how this, um, how our current regulations are limiting um, to the adaptive reuse of existing structures. Um, the uh, tax amendment uh, addition that you see here has been um, developed with town staff and the town attorney to ensure that the language drafted is appropriate um, and that this would provide future flexibility for reusing and repurposing buildings and structures in the future. Um, and I am happy to answer any questions from the commission members um, about the addition of Article 2, Section 31, G4. Mike? I think this is a good addition that makes sense. I have no questions. Thank you. Marcy? Exactly what Mike said. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, I agree with, with Mike and Marcy. Keith? No questions, makes sense to me. John? I am for reuse. <laughs> <laughs> Does the uh, planner have anything to add to this presentation? Uh, no, not at this time. Commissioners okay. have any other questions? This is a public hearing so that anyone in the Zoom audience that would like to speak either in favor or in opposition to this application may do so by raising your hand on the Zoom program 
and we will acknowledge you. Seeing none, no hands. I see no hands. <laughs> Any other questions, commissioners? Nope. Nothing to add, madam? I have no further uh, comments. Thank I'll you. move to close this public hearing. We need a motion, please. This is Marcy Schwartz and I make a motion to accept the uh, amendment to the zoning regulations for special innovation floating zones. Zone. Artemis. Stewart and I see that. Okay. Who was the second, please? Keith. Keith, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstention? Motions carry, thank you. Planners report? Uh, yes, I have a few things to discuss with you guys. I'm gonna start with, um, there was, okay, Five Mountain Road, uh, Miss Porter's campus. Um, they have, oh, excuse me. Um, this building at Five Mountain Road um, was built as a studio. Um, initially and in 1996 it was converted to a residence um, and now Miss Porters is looking to return it to its original use as studio and practice space um, for the for the school. Um, they're working with uh, architect and building department for updating the fires and fire code. There will be no exterior work um, and um, it is my understanding that this switch from use of uh, academic space to residential and then back um, has happened fairly commonly with Miss Porter's and um, has been handled in administratively in the past and the town staff is happy to handle this administratively um, if there are no concerns with the commission with Five Mountain Road being changed in use from residential back to academic practice space. Any comments from the commissioners? Hearing none, I guess the consensus is that you can go forward. All right, sounds great. Um, my second planner's report is in regards to 52 Town Farm, the polo grounds. Um, it is my understanding that last year during the pandemic, um, Mark DeVoe, the previous planner, made flexibility for to allow movie nights um, last year. So with their original approval for events, they have been limited to um, 12 charity events a year. The movie night does fall within charity. They, um, the owner gave me the name of the charity. It's Hometown Heroes, Hometown. So it, it is in fact a charity that the, that the proceeds from movie night go to. Um, they currently have 11 scheduled um, movie nights this year. And I know there's a lot of benefits to the town and people really are enjoying um, these movie nights, but with the current approval that would use up their 12 events. And so um, they are hoping to include this as um, not one of, not include this within their charity events and that quota. And I'm opening up the discussion to the commission to understand kind of the process that we would like to move forward in. Do we think that there is space to expand the amount of events that are happening at the polo grounds to include things like movie nights um, and so forth? This is Keith, has there been any complaints from the neighbors? I know that in recent year, they've added, uh, you know, weekly polo matches and lots of events down there. So has anybody had a? Yeah, issue? so we have had um, concerns from the abutting neighbor. Um, it was spurred by the car show that was hosted there. Um, I believe it was last month. And, and the individual notified town staff that there was a lot of noise from the car show. Um, and then reiterated that the movie nights last 
summer um, caused a fair amount of, it wasn't noise from the movie nights. So the way the movie nights work, if you're unfamiliar with it, is they do the sound through the car speakers, through go going into the radio station. So it's not sound from the movies. It was the cars exiting and the lights um, once the movie was over, um, the queuing up and the leaving of the site. Um, so from my perspective, there might be a way to reassess their site plan and understanding how the queuing up and in, you know, bringing people into the site and leaving the site and getting a proper um, list of their assumed events for the summer because it does seem to be that there are more than 12 charity events occurring over the summer and we're not necessarily um, tabulating them in a consistent manner. Yeah, I mean, I would love for them. I mean, we just attended a charity comedy show for uh, Project Graduation just a week and a half ago. And so it's a nice venue down there for doing things like that. I just would be concerned that 12 charity events and then whatever movie nights, it could be a lot for the neighbors late at night. So if there's a way to make it work, then I think it'd be great, but you know. But isn't it also, it's a, it's a wedding and event venue, right? So when they have those kinds of things, aren't there significant cars coming in and out? Maybe not all at the same. That's a different. Oh, that's it's a different. Yeah, it's a different side. I was going to pull up the map. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's further down that. the road, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Although it's all traffic in the same area. Yeah. Right. I didn't realize they were two separate. Yeah. So from my best understanding, movie night takes place over here, whereas wedding venue is up. Mm -hmm. So there just could uh, be less neighbors. I mean, there are lots over there, but yeah, nobody has. It's but predominantly nobody. the income, the driving in and the driving out and its impact on the direct abutters. Well, there isn't, isn't there further north on Town Farms Road between their southern entry and the northern entry to the Farmington Club, isn't there another exit gate? What if they went in the southern entry and out another way so that mm. those property owners Come here? Well, I, I think it's about halfway down on that left. Right, that's mounted. <laughs> I just remember seeing another opening mm -hmm. somewhere along <laughs> Town Farms Road. Um, it maybe maybe they need to come back and show us a way to mm. have better traffic control. Yeah. Um, if we're going to accommodate them in any fashion, they should be accommodating the town. That's my reaction to this. Um, certainly, I am not in favor of uh, hurting their business or. or I think there's some wonderful things that have taken place over there for charities, and that mm -hmm. should continue without just making it uncomfortable for the neighbors. So there's a way to circulate traffic in a better fashion. Sure. Um, maybe that's something they should come in with um, and show us how they can control it. Okay. I don't know. What's the consensus with the commissioners? I, this is Scott. I agree with that, Barbara, and I would be concerned about impacting the neighbors on the other side of Town Farm Road there, depending on how you bring traffic out 139 right. to 157 there. So I think having them come in is a great idea. Okay. I think that's what we should do. Okay. Have somebody come I, over there with a, with a map, with a circulation, traffic mm -hmm. circulation proposition sure. so we can work with them instead of against them. Right, and I think, I think that would be a great approach to getting all the information out there, making sure yeah. that there is a plan in place for safe circulation and also a way for us to have a list of the events yeah. and make sure that they're still abiding by the original approval. And, and you know, the fact that they have some restrictive um, guidelines in terms of charitable events and if indeed the movie night is in interfering with the, the major traffic for charity events. We don't want to do that either, but try to keep some control over it 
so that we can be the good guy and allow them to do what they do well, mm -hmm. but keep our neighbors happy. Many of the houses on town farms in that area are kind of set back off the road. Um, so it's a little easier to deal with. Um, it's predominantly from my understanding, the individual here, because the exit and entry goes right here at right. his house exactly. or her house. That's it's facing this way. That cross line that we see is the power lines. Right, and we have yeah. a utility um, right of way. So yeah. there is a limitation on the yeah. amount of um, buffer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'll start the conversation with um, okay. the owner and we can continue this uh, with a thoughtful approach to circulation yeah. and Absolutely. the events. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. That, else? That, that concludes my planning report. My goodness yeah. gracious. Now we have to approve the minutes of the May 24th meeting. Can I have a motion, please, and a second? This is Marcy Schwartz, and I'm going to propose that we approve the minutes from the May 24th meeting. Either I second. Thank you. Minutes are approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Are we allowed to have a meeting before?